One day after the December 31st deadline set by the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC for the implementation of the new national minimum wage, the union has repeated her position that it would not guarantee industrial harmony in states that failed to meet the deadline. The NLC president, Ayuba Waba, in his New Year message to Nigeria said only governors who had the intention of looting their state funds would not pay the new minimum wage and has called on the union councils in the affected states to be on standby to engage the state governments for their failure to obey the law. Are we starting the new year with another strike? Still with me in the studio to continue this conversation is John Wesley, MFR, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you for your time Thank tonight. Thank you for having me, yeah. Okay, NLC, in a new year message, is telling us things that, you know, is worrying. Let's start with the accusation that governors who are not willing to pay are planning on looting their state funds well i would not call it accusation it's a statement of fact you know uh because that they, they intend to loot that's why they're not paying they're not i paying. would i would take it as a statement of fact because um, you have no reasons you have no reasons you have no genuine reasons not to pay you know governors will want to tell you that they, they, they have no resources. They, they have, have said that repeatedly, even you before know. all these arrangements came yes. up. Some governors came up and said they will not be able to pay. But and we kept twisting their hands. But geographers will tell you that every state in Nigeria is blessed with at least two resources to generate income. You see, it's unfortunate that we have, we have um, a people in the government house will feel that once the money comes, let us share the money. Once I pay salaries, I pay this, I pay that, I do a little road maintenance and all of that. The remaining money, let me quickly share with political party and take the remaining and that's it. It runs like that every year or every month. You know, so if Ayuba Waba is saying that, it's not out of place for him to say that because, you, in fact, there's no reason. It's obvious. If we have people in government who can earn as much as, as much as 20 million in a month, and there has never been a time that that 20 million naira we delay, what stops somebody who is very innocent from earning 30,000 naira minimum wage? How much is 30,000 naira? So what, what do you suspect would be the likely outcome of this current rhetoric? So he's already issuing directives well, to those state chapters to engage. Unfortunately, it unfortunately, it may take a while because the federal government is, um, is already, uh, I am aware that the federal government is already paying even arrears of um, the minimum wage and uh, they're already doing all of that. So it might not be like having a quick strike probably in the month of january it might take a while it might take towards the end of january it may not just be quick and all of that and um there are certain states that i could tell you that even if they go on strike the governors will not even budge because they don't even care you see we have some set of governors who don't care like state which state and which state yeah there are certain governors that don't care they just feel that if you like go to the mountains, if you like, go to wherever, they will tell you that they cannot pay. We have heard governors from certain northern parts of the country who will tell you that they cannot pay this money. They will tell you that, how well, do you want me to pay? So we have also had governors who are working tirelessly to ensure that they pay, even when it is very, you know, uh, visible to the high that this state is not buoyant to pay. But they're working so you know, very hard to ensure that they pay. We have seen certain states, there's this, there's this, um, there's this, um, was this, this governor, uh, Zulum, uh, Governor Zulum, you know, I've seen some of the moves that the governor is making recently, and you can tell that this is a governor that will stand, you know, the test of time, that will, his name will remain with his people and with this nation once he leaves. You see, we have governors who are trying to do stuff. Governor Shei Makinde in your state is trying to do a whole lot. But if you check these states, these are states that obviously may not even have resources to be able to pay this uh, minimum wage, but they're trying to do so. But there are certain states that will not do so. So according to Ayuba Waba, who is saying that 
This governors who don't want to do this, they have intentions of looting the funds because eventually they will still loot. But, but they, they, they see before now, they, the Nigerian Governors Forum chair has come out to say that states are working to ensure that they pay. But meeting that deadline is another issue entirely. And these governors that kept saying that they don't have the funds to pay this minimum wage, they don't have new sources of income since the last we had this conversation. So if they default and labor grinds, um, um, activities in their state, especially commercial activities in their state, then where does that leave us? Let me put it to you that if the date, the deadline that was given was a deadline for um, an election of these governors to be elected into office and they need to do a whole lot to ensure that they get into office, are you telling me that they will not do everything to get into the office? Are you telling me that they will not get funds? to ensure that they pay whoever and all of that, that as they do to get into office. You see, it is a different thing for you to, to say that this thing is not possible. It's a different thing for you to see that, although it's not possible, but you have the will, the willpower to ensure that you work towards possibility or achieving such thing. But it's another thing for you to like, it's not possible. I cannot come and kill myself, like some people will say. You know, it's not. It, it, you see, it's about the people. You must come. You must bear in mind that without the people, you are, cannot be a governor. But it's a different situation here, where the governor feels that I am a constituted authority. If you don't like whatever we are doing, you can as well leave the job, or you can as well go to hell until the day that the ballot box will be needed again. So that's, you see, that's just why you, you see some things happen, and then nobody, everybody feels that, eh, we will just talk. No, well, nothing if, will if, if the Nigeria Governors Forum is saying, or, I mean, a group of governors are saying that they're working to ensure this, and the NLC is saying there's still states that are yet to comply, we do not have, um, I think there have been efforts to reach the NLC to get details of these states that are yet to comply. There are about, there, there, there are about, there are about 28 or 27 states. So how? Yes. Uh, we have about, um, I think we have about 11 states that have complied. I know Lagos is part. I know yeah. um, certain states uh, in, the, in the north. We have more of people in the north who have complied. We have Lagos and uh, I think maybe two from the southeast or southwest or so. So what you know. becomes of these states? What other alternative will be there for labor to press to get this? Because as it stands, you said it yourself, there's states that might not be able to you know, do much, and there are some governors who are insensitive. Are there other mechanisms to compel these governors to pay this money? Well, there are, there are no other mechanisms because... Uh, uh, we are in a democratic system of government, so the only thing that they would do is, they, if, if they go by the way of confrontation, you can be sure of what happens next, you know. But the only thing that they will continue to do is, the, the, the ultimate thing that I know they will eventually do is to boycott, you know, going to work and all of that. But what they will continue to do is to dialogue. That's the only thing that can happen. That's it the is. only power they have, and the highest power they can you know, met out is to ensure that um, workers don't go to work. And then they boycott work, they do all of that, and that's it. Something worries me. I, I read, I, I needed to bring those to you. I read a, a report um, while I was uh, prepping for this program, and it's from a known economist, a financial expert, uh, okay. Bismarck Rewani. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, he's saying that the disposable income for the Nigerian consumers and customers, consumers rather, will decrease due to the VAT increase. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a situation where Nigerians are unable to, you know, pay their bills, they don't have, how, how would this affect the Nigerian worker, basically? You see, um, just like uh, somebody said also, when, when, take for instance, maybe I'm earning 200 Naira, and when I was earning 200 Naira, maybe I'm paying maybe uh, my tax maybe is about 18 naira or thereabout, you know. And now I am earning 400 naira. And now my tax is still like 28 naira. Are you getting me now? So the, 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 the market where I'm going to, it's not different from the market where, you see, it's about the class. The middle class, the lower class, the upper class. We all go to the same market one way or the other. The same place where we buy pepe 
It's the same place all of us go to. So when we are going to that place, those people there also are aware that you already got an increase in your pay. And so for one reason or the other, they too also, we, you know, what you buy for one naira is now three naira. Because they are aware that you have got increased. But they may not even understand the significance in the increase in your pay. And their own price will skyrocket such that when you get there, you are wondering, ah, what, what's the essence of the increase I got in the first place? Because this thing that I buy for one naira is not even three naira. They would not even do theirs to be two naira. So it's three naira because they feel that you, you already have an increase. And that increase is very, very huge. So like he said, there will be so much, yeah, so much decrease in the consumers, uh, uh, what's it called now? You see, because when you look at, when you look at the way, the way uh, it is structured, I've heard some people talk about their salaries. At maybe Lagos, I've seen, you know, the payment and some of people have, that are complaining that this thing doesn't even measure up. This thing doesn't even add up because when you look at the tax, it's massive. And so they are like, what's the essence? So I'm sure that it will not be something very, very, very comfortable. Okay, on a final uh, note, what would be your expectation for the Nigerian worker in this new year as regards, you know, efforts by government to make life a bit more, you know, enjoyable for the citizens? Well, I, I think that government should uh, create uh, room for uh, interventions. You know, take for instance, there are government workers still pay for um, health. They pay for certain things. Most of the things that ordinarily uh, Nigerian citizens should enjoy, you know, just make provisions for the things that will make life better for the average Nigerian man. And then whatever he takes home, he can spend with peace. Not like what he's taking home, he still have to provide power, provide every other thing in that same take-home that, that the government, government is supposed to provide. provide. Yeah. Thank you very much, John, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. All right. On our PLOS package today, we'll be looking at some project launched to aid the welfare of the army. Where you come from does not matter. My father was a primary school teacher. At one time, he got appointed as a local government commissioner, but that was for a very short while. He returned to his passion and his love, that is to teach at the primary level. If the son of a primary school headmaster who lived on this facility, not in the GRA, would by the grace of God today become the secretary to the government of the Federation, for those of you the message is very clear. You can become whatever you desire in life, provided you remain consistent, you remain focused, you remain resolute, you remain determined in the pursuit of your passion and of your interests. What you resolve to become is what you will become. You will not achieve success by accident. It's a deliberate, pragmatic, and practical pursuit that will take you to where God has destined for you. God has already destined for you a future, but it is your responsibility to walk yourself to that future by his grace and by his support and the help of some of us, you would achieve what God has destined for you. It will, improve it, it, will, it will improve the standard of learning of the teachers and also the students because it will help them in the teaching aids. With help of the computer, practical work can, can be done to the students. And also we have the projector. When the teachers do the classes in the classroom, they can now see the practical, practical aspect of what they have been taught in the classroom into the projector in the computer center. In this world, no, anywhere you go is about computer. Even now the jam, whatever, any exam is about computer. So this project came at the right time and we're going to use it the way we're going to be, impact the knowledge into the people seriously.
President Mohammed Buhari this later said that after a 12-month period of gradual implementation of action plans, Nigerians can expect to see significant improvement in electricity service supply, reliability and delivery. He made reference to the Siemens deal aimed at investing in new capacity for generation, transmission and distribution, among others. Our president certainly seems hopeful and has made many, many promises on this first day of the new year 2020. We shall do a recap when the time comes to see how much of these promises would become reality. Until then, I can only wish him and his team the very best of luck. Plus, politics returns same time tomorrow. If you missed our conversation today, there is a repeat at 3 p.m. every weekday, or you can go watch past episodes on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Until I see you again.